I always tell you Snowpiercer's a masterpiece, too, so that's why oh, I tell you that. Oh, thanks, dude. Yeah, like that little cat one. fucking tie bar. Dude, you gotta get one of these, right. man. My Look fiance at that cat tie bar. That thing's yeah. so sweet. Like yeah, Kevin oh, McCarthy man, Washington. That thing's sharp as hell, man. Thanks, dude. And congratulations. I've been thanks, waiting bro. months to ask you this question. Uh-oh. When I first saw the trailer, when you and Buck are passing the shield back and forth. Right, right, right. How are you filming that? What does that look like when you're when you're fighting sure. Iron Man and the shield's going back and forth? That's CGI. <laughs> it's, it's too impossible to try and navigate actual throws like that and get the shot you need uh, that, that's that's the tricky part of the shield in general you know sometimes sometimes you have the the full real heavy shield sometimes you have the foam shield if you got to hit somebody in the face sometimes there's no shield you know <laughs> when you got to do really acrobatic things with it so during that one it was a lot of uh, miming and really tricky to go back and watch playback and you know, maybe I threw too soon and he caught too late or, oh, wow. you know, you really have to make sure even in your your, your miming of, of, of the exchange that the timing is still there. That was one of the trickiest scenes in the movie. You're a great actor and you're also a great director. Uh, and I, what I find fascinating is directing could possibly change the way you, how you are as an actor. It kind of teaches you things about yourself as an actor. Sure. You made the first cap before you directed Before We Go. <laughs> you made the last, this cap after you directed it. Yeah. How have you changed as an actor since you became a director and is this cap different because of the directing? That's a great question. Thanks, dude. Thanks, man, for not just asking how I work out. <laughs> um, and I wish I had a good answer for you. I will say, there's nothing more eye-opening than being in the editing room, editing yourself as an actor and realizing what you do. You know, your, your, your gimmicks, your hiccups, your, your weaknesses. Hmm. Um, and they're, they're abundant. <laughs> uh, and, and so going into this one, especially coming off of directing, you really try and uh, shed as many... Uh, what I found as an actor, what I did is you protect yourself a lot. You really do a lot of things of, uh, you know, you, you use as many takes as you can doing what you think is the most safe interpretation of the dialogue as opposed to taking risks and saying, mm -hmm. you know what, because it's, it's, we're, on, we're on the time, we're on the clock, you know, we, we, we only have a certain amount of time. Um, but, but taking those risks and being more uh, adventurous with your performance is where the best stuff comes from. So on this one, I think I tried to be a little more free in terms of how I was going to approach the character. That's awesome. Now, in the trailer, when we see that moment, this is not a spoiler, where Iron Man goes, Underoos! And then he, uh, Spidey grabs the yeah. shield. Yeah. How does that look when you're shooting it? Because obviously, we see the shield in your hand. It gets grabbed. It gets taken up. Your hands get taken by the webs. Yeah. How does that look? Is, is Tom there when you're shooting that? No. That one <laughs> shot of that happening, I'm literally exactly as I am now. I'm doing this. <laughs> and just, you know, it's all, you, you're faking it. You're, you're miming it. Because that's all post. Obviously, no one's shooting webs. And obviously, yeah. they couldn't actually mime someone taking the shield off my wrist. So uh, a lot of it is kind of having to <laughs> mimic how, how those actions would go. What has Cap taught you about yourself that you didn't know going in? Now he, it's interesting because the character has, has a lot of conflict. He's internally sure. struggling. Sure. He's externally struggling. Sure. What has he taught you about yourself that you didn't know as an actor and a person? Sure. Uh, it's, it's nice to, it's nice to, when you do these interviews with people and they say, you know, we, what people respond to as a result of Cap, what, what people feel about him, and and you see how much, how people are so touched by someone who is selfless, and mm. how, how touched people are by someone who uh, just wants to do the right thing, with, with no praise, no agenda, no no ego involved. Um, it, it really is inspiring to leave and kind of say, that really does have an impact. This isn't just a hypothetical that if I'm a good man, people will, it, it, it it's in all of our nature to be good. It is. I believe that. Um, hmm. And, and it's, it's nice to kind of have these interviews and do these press tours where people say the parts of Cap they respond to were his, his intrinsic quality of, of morality and values. And it makes you go home at night and really aspire to, to kind of look at yourself and try and be the best person you can be because that, that's, that's what has the most positive ripple effect in this world. That's awesome. Thank you for Snowpiercer. You're hey, awesome at life. That, now, I have to ask, obviously one of the greatest moments in the movie is the running moment towards each other. And I'm, I know there's CGI there, but how many times are you guys doing the run? Like, how, do you guys do that multiple times? To All day. <laughs> there was literally a day where we were just running. But <laughs> also, was... like, August, Atlanta, Georgia isn't yeah. necessarily conducive to that sort of running at, at all. People Germany were, was better. 
Yeah, people were out of breath, I think. <laughs> Paul Rudd had that mask on oh. the whole time. Did he really? Yeah. But it wasn't Paul. His stuntman did a lot of that. Fucking Paul Rudd. He's not. Yeah, <laughs> fuck him. Fuck you. No, <laughs> no, no, no. The flying f a falcon blows my mind. And I, when I talked to you for Winter Soldier, you were explaining to me how that was done. How has the flying changed since then? Has the effects gotten different? Do, do you do it differently now in this film? No, I do it much uh, less. Uh, I realize I have a really good stuntman, and it hurts. And, and when, we, <laughs> when we see you land though from a fly, and that's then, me. And then the 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 wings come back in. Yeah, yeah, how yeah. How, does, how are they doing that? Uh, I, they put me on a string and literally take me about 15 feet off the ground, and I go from here to landing, and then they CGI all the wings and all that other stuff. Now the motorcycle sequences blew my mind when Black Panther, that whole sequence when he's running and you guys are on that cycle. But you have a sequence where you grab a dude off the motorcycle. Right. That yeah. blew, talk about that moment, like in shooting that scene. That was mind blowing. Uh, you know, I they had me come in at um, at the very end of the scene <laughs> and just grab the bike. <laughs> they were like, "You're not allowed anywhere near a machinery." Um, no, but the cool thing I have to say, you got to credit our, uh, this the second AD, which is uh, Spiro. Yeah, it's this phenomenal director who kind of goes uncredited for a lot of the sequences you see in Fast and the Furious and whatnot. And he has this trick he came up with, which is like kind of um like a slide. Yeah, like it's a magic is. carpet he calls it, right? Oh. And you're and you're basically there's a car dragging this sheet, sort of like an escalator, right? And so you're running on that and it looks like you're running three times as fast. You just and I was like, oh, so if I, if I need to, I'll just hop off. And he's like, do not do that. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do, do not do that. And I was like, oh, great. Thanks for telling me this. I've got two takes. <laughs> now, your character, obviously, very internal. A lot going on inside of him. And I'm wondering, as an actor, is it harder to be internal or external? Because I mean, you're, you're, you're carrying a lot of weight Oosh. in this film. Uh, you better write that I, question down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I think external, just because you know sometimes it's it's better to let the costume do the do the acting for you. You know, hmm. like, I feel like a lot of just, lube. Yeah, a lot of lube. That's gonna <laughs> happen a lot on this yeah. tour. Really? Yeah, which is starting today. <laughs> <laughs> like, some of the sequences in the MCU have blown my mind over the years. Obviously, Whedon's one shot in Avengers yep. when it went through all the guys, and then uh, and uh, the Avengers, and then you had the uh, epic like leaping shot in Ultron, your bridge sequence in Winter Soldier, mm -hmm. the sequence when they're all running towards each <laughs> other in this film. How are you filming that? Who is really there? What's digital? How are you doing that moment? It's an epic moment. Well, you know, a, a lot of the a lot of the actors are there, a lot of the stunt players are there, but there are also a lot of the digital characters in the film as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, our we our effects team, uh, uh, who we couldn't do this movie without, is so good that I think that you'll have a hard time telling who's digital and who isn't, which mm -hmm. might be why you're asking the question. Yeah, uh, it's it was something that you know took a lot of thought and a lot of effort from a bunch of different departments on the movie. Uh, it's something that you know we knew that was going to be for us the highlight of the film. Uh, just as a kid collecting, you know, crossover comic books where there are a bunch of characters in them, it was always about opening up to the middle page, and and seeing every character fighting each other and just imagining what was going on, and uh, and that's what we wanted to create with that sequence was our own splash panels. It's called in the comics. Now I'm a big fan of IMAX shots. I love like what Nolan did with Dark Knight, where it would jump up and down. And you shot some sequences in this film with IMAX camera. Now I have not seen the film in IMAX. Can I ask what scenes are jumping to the full IMAX uh, scenes? It, it was the you know the big scene that Joe referred to as the splash panel or the airport scene. You can call it. It's the scene where all the superheroes fight each other. That that sequence we figured deserved that <sighs> scope and that scale of of uh, of frame. You know, we also have a lot of characters that fly in that sequence. There's a lot of vertical movement in that sequence, and the, and the sort of the, the added dimension in the in the IMAX frame really helps us sell the action in in that in, on that axis. Is that whole scene going to be an IMAX? The whole scene is an IMAX. Oh, yeah. Yes. I, can, I, can we go watch it right now together? Yeah. I need to see that again. 17 yeah. minutes. Yeah. I would watch that on a loop and yeah. pay twenty dollars for three hours yeah. just to watch <laughs> that scene in a loop. Um, I have to ask you, Henry Jackman's score is brilliant, yeah. and I'm wondering, um, you have so many characters in the film. How many themes does he give you? Does each person get a theme, and how do you, how do you direct him to have the arcs and give the emotional pieces of them? It's a great well, question. Yeah. yeah, I think I mean it was interesting with Henry because it, you because there are so many characters in the movie. 
and it's it's a very complex story. The the, the risk is getting lost. Like you can't chase all of those ideas. Right. So Henry had to work very hard on a musical level to figure out how does he sort of bring these things together in a way that like gives the movie a cohesion where you're not sort of shooting off in in a hundred directions at any given moment. Mm -hmm. And Henry did it extremely elegantly. He found several key themes they used throughout the movie that really play to the storytelling. Uh, and the character, some of the characters, but not getting lost in it. Yeah. How do you do the scene when the shield's going back and forth between Bucky and Cap when they're fighting Iron Man? Because that shot in the trailer, it blows my mind. How is that happening? Like, what's happening? Uh, you know, it's that's tough, Evans yeah. and Sebastian actually learned the entire sequence. I think we shot it about eight or nine times. <laughs> uh, uh, we did eight or nine takes of it, and we actually came up with that about four hours before we shot it. So it was just one of those things where we are working on the final fight and we've just had a feeling that we needed uh, a moment, a team up moment from the two of them uh, and, uh, and you know, our stunt department uh, and, and our camera department, we all got together and said, look, let's figure out this out. But it's a very, I mean, it was a very difficult shot. I mean, that, it took us a while to get it right, like Joe was saying, but it was also exhausting the actors, as you can imagine. Right. We, had to give them a, we had to give them a good recovery period before we could do another take every time. It was interesting. Guys, thank you for everything. You guys thank are phenomenal you. filmmakers. Thanks for a great story. Such a pleasure. And for Vision's makeup, I, 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 I spoke to you at Age of Ultron. It's partially CGI, but also there's partially real makeup on your face. How much of it is actually really on you? Uh, it's all real except for the lines that, you know, the, the, the sort of circuitry of the costume continues onto the makeup and that, that, is, that is done in post. But I am spending my days purple. <laughs> Yes. That's amazing. Now I'm from DC, you went to Howard University, mm. which is amazing. I want to ask you just about like your journey from Howard to now. Uh, you know what? You know what was more interesting is um, I'm really proud that the that one of the writers of the 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 new Black Panther issues is from Howard. Oh. Uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates um, is is writing the new Black Panther issues, uh, which just started um, a couple of days ago, the March issue. So there's a whole new series. So I'm proud of those connections. Mm. Um, uh, but as far as my path from Howard, that's too long to even <laughs> to even say. But the fact that Black Panther is Howard on the page and also Howard mm. on the screen, um, I think it's a proud moment. Have you met with Ryan Coogler yet? Have you guys already started working on the standalone movie? And what 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 has been done so far? Yeah, we we're working on it. I can't. Wait. I can't tell you. I can't wait to see it, man. <laughs>